Hello board game brothers and sisters and welcome to another episode where I'll be letting you know of Kickstarter's launching this week. This is going to be a massive episode and this many campaigns in a single week is borderline inhumane to us content creators so please hit that like and subscribe button to lend me some energy. Let's get straight to it and check out the Kickstarters. And the first few campaigns we have are launching on May 31st and the first one we have is called Vermin Vendetta. And this plays two to four players and takes about 30 to 45 minutes per player. And this is an area control game where each player is going to be taking on a faction of bugs, duking it out in a modular backyard battleground. Players each have their own unique deck of cards representing their faction, and players can purchase additional cards throughout the game to modify their deck. Each faction also has its own set of missions that players can complete in order to unlock new abilities that can be used throughout the game. A player's goal is to complete all of their missions, and the first player that does this wins the game. This game will also feature an early bird for those backing in the first 48 hours, so make sure to check out the pre-launch page to get notified so you don't miss out on that. I have links to all these campaigns in the description below. And the next campaigns for a game which won the best overall game for its solo mode on a BGG Solitaire print and play contest, and this one's called The Mechanical Beast. And although this won a Solitaire contest, it can actually play 1-4 to four players, and it takes about 20 to 40 minutes to play. And the game can be played solo, co-op, or competitively. And this is a tile lane and tile manipulation puzzle game, where players are a team of engineers along with their android helper, exploring the belly of a giant robot to find its control room and deactivate it. The game plays over two parts, and in the first half, players will be laying tiles growing a labyrinth that they will explore in order to discover the off switch of the mechanical beast. Once the switch is discovered, the rooms begin collapsing around you and players must quickly reach the exit before the robot locks down. To make things even more interesting, players will be able to use the gears they find within the robot in order to modify the tiles and create better escape routes. If players aren't quite quick enough, they'll be trapped inside the robot forever. Because this game was entered in a print and play contest, there are actually a ton of reviews out for this one already on the game. And this is one of the reasons I love design contests. It gets your game in front of a ton of people, allowing for designers to get lots of blind playtesting and feedback to further enhance their game. It's also a really nice tool to make leaps and bounds on your design as it puts a little fire on you as you try to hit deadlines to make your game more presentable. If you're designing a game, I highly recommend looking for different design contests to enter your game into. I really love what's been done with this game and it gives me a ton more confidence in the design and dedication that the creator is putting towards it. And next we have The Heroes of Thargos, the Cursed Empire RPG card game. And this plays an undeterminate number of players and it has several different play modes. You can play this solo, PvP, cooperative, and you can even tie it in with the Cursed Empire role-playing game. And this game is built around the factions and characters that you'd find from the RPG. And battles are fought using resource management and a number of mission tracks. Players will develop their own decks and playstyles as much as they like through the cards provided in the core game. But if they choose, they can also include cards from regularly released card packs. The goal of the game is to acquire victory points by completing mission cards. Each player has access to four mission tracks and the associated mission card that goes along with it. As mission cards are completed by opposing players, you'll replace them from your own deck, and this can act as a small catch-up mechanism as your mission cards will give you a slight advantage. Also launching on the 31st is Final Fusion, and this plays 2-5 to five players and takes about 60-90 to 90 minutes to play. And this is a game where players will be fighting their way through space, trying to gather void particles to help them be the first to complete the Final Fusion and win the game. This is a competitive, conflict-driven game where each player will lead two allied alien races, where both races contribute a set of action and conflict cards, as well as their individual fleets. Each faction is represented by a cool little miniature that will be navigating the different locations, and battle in this game is quick and frequent and has many similarities to that of Cosmic Encounter. Conflicts are triggered anytime a player enters another player's location, and each player's population, colonies, and allied factions at adjacent locations will add to their strength. Just like in Cosmic Encounter, neutral players can also add Add support to either side of the battle, and the battle is finally resolved by simultaneously revealing strength cards, and the player with the highest strength wins the battle. After the cards are revealed, players can also modify the outcome by making use of any available support cards that they might have. Throughout the game, players can also buy new technologies for their decks, gain traits and abilities, use location-specific special actions, and command their fleets into massive space battles. Players can attempt to complete the final fusion at any time, but this puts a target on their back because if they lose any battle before their next turn, they fail to complete the fusion. This is where the void particles come in because each particle will add defense to your attempt, making your likelihood of success a little bit higher. 
Gaining particles is done by extracting them, colonizing locations, or winning battles against your opponents. This game looks like it packs a lot of punch, and it's one that I'm more and more impressed with as I look into it. I didn't see any ratings for this one on the BGG page, but it looks really elegant in its design. And if it sounds interesting to you, definitely check it out. I have links to all the campaign pages in the description below. You can go ahead and check those out, and if you like, you can even click to get notified once the campaign launches. And the next one I'm pretty sure is launching on the 31st as well, and it's called Order in Entropy, and it plays 2-4 to four players and takes about 30 to 180 minutes to play. And this is a science fantasy tactical deck builder. In this game, players compete to gain the most wisdom. Players start the game with a trait card, and this grants a permanent effect, and more traits can be gained throughout the game. Each turn, you draw cards from your consciousness deck, and then discard them into your subconscious deck. When your consciousness deck runs out, you reshuffle your subconscious pile, and that recreates your consciousness deck. These combined decks also act as your health and you can eliminate other players by reducing these two decks to zero by using different attack cards. Cards can also be forgotten and remembered through different abilities and to learn new cards players need to have enough experience to gain its ability. Different cards have different uses and can grant different attack, defense, wisdom, or special abilities and the game shifts into different phases which dictate which cards you can and can't use. Players can win the game by eliminating all their opponents, or they can have the most wisdom by the time someone learns the end game card, which triggers the end of the game. Each player also gets their own player board to keep all their decks organized and streamlined. And those are all the games launching in May, but I was tracking a few games that I never got an exact date for, but I was expecting this month. And the first one is Immortal King's Fantasy, The Black Keep. And this is a dungeon crawler with a focus on high quality miniatures. And then we also had Mr. Re Surviving the Nightmare World, which is a one-to-many asymmetrical card game that uses mechanisms like area majority, hand management, and variable player powers. And the last one I didn't have a date for is Electric Empires, and this is a auction bidding and worker placement game. And now we're getting into the ton of campaigns launching on June 1st, but this first one, Ruthless Tall Tales, is going to be a little bit different because it's actually no longer going to Kickstarter, and instead they'll be using a pre-order model. And the publishers decided to go this route because they're limited to only 400 copies, and bypassing Kickstarter will allow them to avoid the added costs, which will allow them to offer those savings onto us with better prices, which I'm totally cool with. And this is an expansion to the game Ruthless, which plays 2-4 to four players and takes about 40-60 to 60 minutes to play. This game combines deck building drafting and set collection with a pirate theme where players will build their crew and fight their opponents over six rounds and the player who gains the most points wins the game. This expansion will have new content and mechanisms across several different modules that you can combine with the game as you like. This includes the merfolk faction, infamous pirates with strong new powers that you can add to your raids, the Kraken, which is both a threat and an opportunity to gain special rewards if you can fight it off. Multi-purpose treasure chests, new powers, new pirates, and more treasure. This will also be offering a brand new solo mode. Like I said, this one doesn't appear to be going to Kickstarter, so make sure to sign up on their website if you want to get notified of launch before those 400 copies run dry. And next we have Floating Floors, and this is a tactical balancing ninja duel that plays 2-4 to four players and takes about 30-60 to 60 minutes to play. In this game, players each contribute to a difficult path of floating floors for their opponent to attempt to cross. This is done by balancing tiles on small cubes so that when they are left alone, they are stable and complete. Tiles have black spaces, and white spaces and a player's ninja may only stand on the spaces that matches the color of their ninja meeple. Players will have to be careful as they navigate these tiles because the weight of their ninja may cause the tiles to collapse if placed incorrectly. A skilled ninja may use a counterbalance to make some unexpected movements possible. And the first ninja to claim all four of the Banson seals concealed by their rival wins the game. Also launching on the first is Alien Pet Shop, and this is a light dice placement and set collection game for 2-4 to four players, and it takes about 30-90 to 90 minutes to play. And this game features some really fun artwork for the whole family to enjoy, and in this game players compete to run the most efficient shop by gathering exotic, cute, and sometimes dangerous pets from across the galaxy. Dangerous pets take extra care as they can overwhelmingly shop with pests, slime, or even fire, and players will roll and hire dice workers to take care of their pets, sell goods, and even mutate their pets into more desirable designer pets through breeding and by modifying their individual traits. 
Players collect money and sets of pets to earn rewards and gain victory points in order to win the game. Players can also gain habitat upgrade cards, which grant some powerful abilities to be used throughout the game. And the next campaign is Adventure Tactics Adventures in Alchemy, which is an expansion for Adventure Tactics Domains Tower, which plays 1-5 to five players and takes about 45 to 90 minutes to play. And this original game is an encounter-based, campaign-driven, cooperative tactical combat where players begin their journey as one of five basic classes, and they battle their way through a branching storyline that features choose your own adventure elements. This expansion introduces a new hero and mini campaign that takes you through the first five levels of your journey and then continues the adventure by diving directly into Act 2 of the original game. This also adds new enemies, elite classes, initiative types, and non-player allies to add a lot more variability to your game. And of course some new fancy miniatures as well. And then we have My Singing Monsters the board game, which is a strategic worker placement set in the world of My Singing Monsters, which is originally a game for iOS. And this board game version plays 2-5 to five players and takes about 30-40 to 40 minutes to play. And this game starts simple, but players will be adding new components and rules over time, making the game more and more complex, evolving the experience into a full-on strategy game. This is a really interesting mechanism because it exposes players to more complexity as the game goes on, which may be more accessible accessible for newer or non-gamers. The game plays over a multi-island play area and each island has a different action which is triggered when a monster is played on it. On a turn, players place a monster from their hand onto an available slot on an island, triggering its effect. Players can also breed new monsters to add to their hand and they also receive element tokens matching the monster that they've just played. Element tokens are used to complete different musical cards and the end of the game is triggered when a player enters the final row of the score tracker and at this point all players have one final turn before a winner is determined. And next we have another game based on a video game IP and this one's called The Binding of Isaac Four Souls Requiem. And this is an expansion to the original game The Binding of Isaac that was previously launched on Kickstarter. And in the original game players draw a character card and then take turns attacking monsters to gain different resources which can be used to purchase items and upgrades for their characters, eventually becoming strong enough to fight bosses and attempt to gain their soul. Players will be forming alliances when it benefits them and breaking them at any moment as they ultimately compete to gain four souls first in order to win the game. This expansion will feature over 200 totally new cards, a reprinted version of the base game with the Kickstarter exclusives, along with a ton of limited edition binding of Isaac merchandise like figurines, plushies, and apparel. And if you like this sort of content and want to help support the channel while still getting something nice for yourself, definitely check out kickstartergames.com because you can save yourself a ton of money by using the coupon code SHELFCLUTTER because it'll get you 15% off your entire cart. kickstartergames.com has a ton of board games to choose from, so if there's a game that you've been looking to add to your collection, definitely go ahead and check it out because they'll probably have it and you can save yourself some cash. A small percentage of any sales made here will come back and help this channel and that along with the 15% discount just might be enough justification for you to go ahead and make that next purchase that you've been waiting to make. And if you'd rather get free games, you can also sign up to their newsletter because they do a giveaway every month and all you have to do to get entered into those is sign up to their newsletter. And if you are looking for other ways to support this channel, I do have a Patreon in the description below, and I truly appreciate anyone who wants to take a look at that. And if you're not looking to spend any money, you can also just like and subscribe. It's totally free, and it helps the channel in a big way when it comes to other people finding this content. And if you hate this content, you can go ahead and hit that dislike button. And if you just want to sit back and enjoy the rest of the video, we're all welcome here. And the next campaign is one that I know a lot of us are excited for, partially because it's our Discord pick of the week, and this one's called The Fall of the Mountain King, and this plays 2-5 to five players and takes about 60-90 to 90 minutes to play. And this is a standalone game in the Hall of the Mountain King series, which is actually a prequel to the original game. And this is set during the war where the gnomes attacked and drove the trolls from their mountain kingdom. During the course of three gnome attacks, players take on the role of respected troll leaders using primarily action selection and area control to rise up and rally troops to the defense of your ancestral home. Throughout the game, players will be building their ancestry to drive their actions, recruit great champions to their side along with their individual powerful skills, and compete for favor within the seven different clans, as well as defeating gnome invaders or even falling in defense of the mountain to earn honor. The mountain is made up of several domains, each belonging to one of the troll clans. Players will fight for control in the various caverns to earn honor and votes from the various clan leaders. A round begins with players drafting and building their ancestry, which dictates the actions that they can make throughout the game and the strategies that are available to them. 
Card symbols include hammers, which advance units around the board, shields, which bolster units in dominated caverns, and influence, which can be used to recruit champions. There's also a gnome symbol, which grants special actions throughout the game. Symbols not only determine the actions that you can perform, but also the strength of those actions. At the end of the round, the gnomes will attack at random gates, which some players may be able to anticipate, and brave trolls that stand up to the gnomes earn honor even if they fall in battle, and that honor will be reflected in the scoring. This game is from a different designer and offers a very different experience, but stays true to the original tone, weight, and length of the original game. If you're a fan of the original game, you'll definitely want to check this one out. I'm not 100% sure if the original is going to be offered in this campaign with the Kickstarter exclusives, but you can click to get notified on their website, and I have links to all that in the description below. And the next campaign is my pick of the week, and this is the 2022 board game Mosaic Calendar. For those that truly keep your shelves cluttered, you'll know that at the end of each of my videos is a really cool piece of art created out of board game components. Many of you have left your comments of appreciation and even asked me who makes these awesome pieces of work. And something else that you may not know is that I've never actually shown the same piece of artwork twice. And all this hard work is thanks to the effort of Katya Houtsen, who creates these board game mosaics. And this campaign is going to be offering mosaics of hers in a full 2022 calendar. I personally have a lot of fun checking out the different designs and looking closer into each one of them to see the different components she used and if I can recognize any of the components and which games that they might have been from. And I think these are really cool, which is why I reached out to Katya asking if I could feature her designs at the end of my videos. Since then it's become such the highlight that it is, and what truly amazed me, and a big reason as to why I asked in the first place, is that she invented a whole new way to enjoy the hobby. And that's something I don't take for granted, and it's something I really admire and I want to share and encourage in any way that I can. Katia's passion and creativity has introduced a way for us to enjoy the hobby that hasn't really been done before. I support this over 9,000 and if you think it's cool or if you're one of the viewers that truly appreciates the segments at the end of this video and want to see more, this is a really great opportunity to support her work. I've met Katia several times and she's super kind and hardworking and she also plays a large role in the Board Game Revolution Facebook group, which you may also have enjoyed. Definitely check out her campaign, I'll have links in the description and you can go ahead and click to get notified on on the launch. And next on June 1st we have Pot Yuck and this is a party game for 3-5 to five players and takes about 30 minutes to play. In this game players are dishwashers working their way up to becoming the head chef at a restaurant that makes terrible dishes and they're going to be doing this by combining food, spices and methods to come up with the worst food combos possible that they can imagine. Each round features a kitchen item which specifies rules that players must follow. Players gain points for the worst dishes as they work their way up the ranks. The first player to win a round as head chef wins the game. And the next campaign for June 1st is Daimyo Senso, and this plays 2-8 to eight players, and it's a game that takes about 1-2 to two hours to play. And each player takes the role of a 16th century Japanese daimyo in conquest to become the next shogun. Players take turns over 4 seasons for 4 years, which represent rounds. Players will be using pre-programmed commands during each season to move, deploy, or attack. Once per year, each player can amplify the power of one of their commands in order to have a bigger impact. Players will tally up their castles, cities, and fortresses and award honor based on that round's total. At the end of the game, the player with the most honor wins. The game also features alternative last man standing rules for a longer game. And the last campaign I have for June 1st is Orba Dice, which is not a board game, but it's a set of spherical RPG dice. And these dice are interesting because they actually work. They have an internal section cut out with a weighted ball bearing to both shorten the roll time as well as ensure that the outcome of the die is clearly determined. This way you'll never end up in the situation where the die stops on the edge of two numbers. And if you're in the market for an interesting set of dice, make sure to subscribe to this one because you'll get a free Kickstarter exclusive D6 for backing in the first 24 hours. And finally, we have Squaring Circleville, which launches on June 3rd, and this plays 1-4 to four players and takes about 90 to 120 minutes to play. And Squaring Circleville is based on the history of the small town of Circleville, Ohio. And this town was originally designed in a circular pattern, which was a decision that was quickly met with regret. The people hated the circular roads, which forced everyone to build on oddly shaped lots and generally caused confusion for all the residents. This eventually caused enough problems that the town decided to convert into a more conventional grid. And in this game, players will work for the Squaring Circleville company to manage the process of deconstructing and reconstructing their town of Circleville. 
Players will move around a courthouse rondelle that sits in the center of Circleville to get permits to perform different actions, such as deconstructing and constructing roads, or demolishing and building structures. And as the game proceeds, your construction team becomes more experienced and gains abilities to improve their overall efficiency. The player who makes the biggest impact and scores the most points wins the game. And that's it for this week, but don't leave yet because we have three pledge giveaways to announce, and the first one we have is Robot Quest Arena. And Robot Quest is a deck building robot battler from the creators of Star Realms where players are competing to be the best robot tech in the world. Each turn you get a 5 card hand which you will play to gain energy, attack, or upgrade your bot as you attempt to knock your opponents out of the ring and deal damage to score the most points in order to win the game. And this giveaway is going to be for the tech tier pledge which comes with the core game, the Kickstarter exclusive card and tile promo pack, and all unlock stretch goals. And to enter this giveaway, just leave a comment down below with the hashtag bot and let us know who your favorite sci-fi robot or AI is. For me, I'd definitely go with Android 16. He likes birds and he also triggered my favorite scene in all of Dragon Ball Z. And the next giveaway we have is for Skyline Express and in this game players are aspiring managers for the first aerial train. But to gain the role of the manager, you must have the most victory points at the end of three rounds. Players gain points by efficiently placing their passengers from the waiting area into the appropriate carriages. And there's going to be six different types of individuals with their own preferences and pairing passengers according to their types adds another layer for maximizing your points. Additional points can be gained by servicing passengers during the trips and the game uses mechanisms like pattern building, set collection, tile placement, and action selection. And this giveaway is going to be for an all-in pledge which comes with the full copy of the game with the expansion and the roll and write and all unlock stretch goals. And to enter this giveaway just leave a comment down below with the hashtag express and let us know what your go-to cabin is, first class, business class, or economy. For me, I can appreciate the luxury, but I like to save money more than I like my own comfort. So I have no problem sleeping in cramped and unusual places. So I go with economy all the way. And the last giveaway we have is for a copy of Sodalis, which is a game designed from tarot cards. And in this game, players take on the role of different champions to their home planets, competing for favor of Sodalis, which is their sentient star. Each champion has a unique miniature and a deck of arcana cards that can be cast to gain influence throughout the game. Players take turns moving across the board and utilizing and cycling through their cards to defeat other champions to earn victory points and win the game. And this giveaway is going to be for a champion pledge, which comes with the base game and all unlock stretch goals and promotional material. And to enter this giveaway, just head over to the Discord in the description below and check out the giveaways channel. And all you have to do is click the little emoji below the post to get automatically entered. And then just check back in a week because the winner will be automatically drawn. And now let's go ahead and draw a winner for last week's giveaway, which was for a copy of Maximum Apocalypse Wasted Wilds. And to draw a winner, I use this fancy application here. And all these extra names down here are bonus entries for my Patreon subscribers. If you like this sort of content and you want to help out the channel, definitely check that out. I have a link in the description below. And let's go ahead and grab those comments and draw a winner. And for this one, I had asked the viewers to let us know what their best survival skill would be. And our winner is Michael Miggs McDonald. And this one doesn't have a comment because it's actually one of our Patreon subscribers. So congratulations, Michael. I'll reach out to you and let you know that you won yourself a pretty sweet pledge for Maximum Apocalypse. And that's it for this week. Thanks so much for watching. And for those of you that have been following along, I did just move here. And I'm hoping to get a lot of work done over the next week. And I'm thinking that this filming space is going to look a lot different in the next video. So stay tuned for that and the usual content. And until next time, keep that shelf cluttered and the table full.